Slog FPV. Today we're reviewing the Mobula 6 HD. It's a follow-on to the very popular Mobula 6 standard and race edition. So it's a pretty complete kit that you get. Um, of course, you get the Mobula 6 HD here. You get four batteries. You get a battery charger. Um, in the um, package here, you get a screwdriver. You get some um, canopy screws here. You get some spare props. You get the camera controller board along with the um, cable harness, and then you get a prop removal tool. Then lastly, you do get some instructions that are actually uh, pretty good. So let's uh, quickly go through the specs. Um, of course, the wheelbase is 65 millimeters. Uh, the weight that I was uh, measuring is 28 grams with an SD card. Um, they spec it at 27 grams. That's probably without an SD card. Uh, the receiver option I have is uh, the SPI FR Sky version. Uh, the flight controller in here is, of course, the Crazy B F4 Lite um, flight controller. Uh, the ESCs on it um, are uh, 5 amp BL Heli S. The VTX on here is a 25 milliwatt VTX. Um, it does support um, OSD. Uh, the um, star of the show, of course, is the Run Cam Split 3 Lite. Um, the field of view on this is uh, 165 degrees. Uh, that is uh, for recording. And in the FPV feed, it's 165 degrees at 16 by 9 and 130 degrees if you're running it in 4x3 mode. And the video resolution is uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second. So the motors on here are the Happy Model EX0802, 19,000 kV motors. Uh, these are an upgrade from the original Mobula 6 standard version uh, because it does have uh, this curved bell, which I think looks pretty nice. So overall, very impressive specs on this little guy. So this isn't a complete video on how to set up models on your transmitter. Um, I'll point you to a, a good tutorial on that by Joshua Bardwell. Uh, this is just the basic couple of things you need to do to get it into the air. The way I have my T16 set up, I really only have three basic models that I use. Uh, the first one being a SPI D8 model that I've set up, and I actually bind all my SPI whoops uh, to this model. So what we're going to do next is look at the channel map order. So here I'm showing you the mixer tab on this model. And again, you can see A, E, T, R, and then my aux channels are arm, mode, rate, and buzzer. So now that we've written down the channel map order, in my case, it's A, E, T, R. Let's go ahead and go into the beta flight configurator. Uh, so there's basically just two things that I want you to do, um, which is the easiest thing to get it up in the air. Uh, the first being, uh, we should go into the setup tab and go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer because we're going to be flying in angle mode. So um, just make sure that uh, you use a box and um, put it on a flat surface. And so um, what you're going to do is just uh, hit calibrate. And uh, mine was just slightly off. So as you can see, um, it's now calibrated and it should fly uh, a lot more stable. So um, definitely do that if you plan on flying in angle mode. So the next thing you want to do is go to the receiver tab. In this case, it's set up as TAER1234, which doesn't match my model. So what I'm going to have to do is go in here and select FR Sky. So there's two basic ones. The FR Sky is AETR. Um, and the Spectrum one is TAER1. So those are the two common ones. Happy Models happens to set their channel map up to, as a Spectrum. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and uh, just select FR Sky. Um, you can also do it manually by just typing the channel order in. Uh, but what's easier is just to select the right one here and then hit save. Um, so next we're going to need to bind it, but uh, unfortunately since uh, this is running 3.5.7, um, you can't go into the CLI um, command and type in 
um, bind underscore rx, which is a lot easier than um, you know putting it into bind mode by pushing the bind button. But uh, in this case, uh, because it's running an older version of firmware, we're going to have to do it the manual way. There is one other change I think you really should do. In the power and battery tab, uh, they had the minimum cell voltage and the warning cell voltage too low. Uh, the most important thing is uh, probably the warning cell voltage. It was set for 3.0. And what happened, I wasn't paying attention because normally I rely on the the warning voltage to flash and then uh, come in and land. Um, it was set to 3.0, so literally uh, the voltage got to a point where it was down at 3.0 and uh, the uh, DVR and the camera actually just shut off. So you definitely want to bump that up to 3.2 and the minimum cell voltage to 3. So when it starts flashing at 3.2, you really do want to come in and land. So next we're going to go through the bind process. You can see the bind button here. So you're going to want to go ahead and plug the battery in, in this case. And we're going to go ahead and depress this button. And you'll notice that it went from solid or blinking red to solid red. That means it's in the bind mode. And so next you're going to want to go over to your radio here. I have a model like I've already shown you, it's already set up. So um, go ahead and um, scroll up and go into bind. As you can see, I'm running FR Sky D8. So let's go ahead and put it into bind mode. And it shows that it's binding. And as you can see, it stopped beeping and it looks like it's bound. So I went ahead and unplugged the battery and plugged it back in just to ensure that it is truly bound. So you can see that it's a solid red. And if we go back to the main page here, um, you can see that we have good signal strength here. So we're ready to go take it out for a maiden flight. So I should have been paying more attention to the voltage on the battery. Um, the low voltage warning is set to way too low, so I'm going to have to fix that. Um, it uh, basically, uh, get out of here, Wasp, uh, was set to a point where I was flying, and uh, I'll show you real quick in the video, where um, it basically blacked out um, on the recording, didn't have any uh, video feed, and then, of course, I dropped it right down. And then you can notice another issue is uh, the SD card bounced out um, so yeah without a retaining clip you know, be, need to be careful with that
So my thoughts on the Mobula 6 HD so far. The pros, uh, number one, the Runcam Split 3 is an excellent camera. The FPV video is uh, very uh, crisp and I was able to use it to navigate in very tight spaces. And as you saw in my video, um, I was flying uh, with the sun low in the horizon and I did not have excessive blowout. Also, uh, the recording video is good for a 65 millimeter whoop. Um, yes, you do see some jello in the brightest of sunlight up high, but low where I normally fly, it's not too bad. And it's something you definitely could post on YouTube. Um, the tune on this, I thought is spot on. I had uh, next to no prop wash, as you saw in the video, even in, in tight turns. Um, I still think uh, that uh, for some of the smaller whoops like this, you know, uh, people are having an easier time getting a good tune on 3.5.7. So I, I don't think it's a big deal that it's not uh, upgraded to the 4.2 version of Betaflight. Um, I think uh, they did that on purpose because they might have had some problems uh, getting a good tune up with uh, 4.2. Uh, also, I like the 65 millimeter format, as I think even at uh, family pic picnics, this is something you could use to capture videos of your family and friends, um, as they would think it was just a little toy and not pay too much attention to it. And then lastly, I think the uh, uh, value of this thing is pretty high at $119 to get uh, this kind of technology in a very small 65 millimeter um, package. I think it's pretty amazing that, you know, in 2020 that we can get HD caliber video in a 1S 65 millimeter whoop. So the cons, it's definitely not a Mobula 6 standard like the one I have here on the right um, as far as flight performance. Um, just to get it off the ground, you are looking at about 65% throttle. A uh, point being, it will not do uh, whoop acro very easily, as you saw. You know, I did get one sort of power loop um, to happen, but it really isn't uh, designed for that. Uh, as far as uh, uh, flight time, I also didn't think it was that great. Um, without the JESC firmware loaded on it, um, you know, the 48 kilohertz version, um, you get about two and a half, well, I would say two, two minutes, 45 seconds, um, if you don't want to hurt your batteries. Um, with the JESC firmware on there, you get a little over three minutes, um, but uh, still not the best as far as uh, flight time. And that's due to its heavier weight. Um, also, you really need to change the factory warning voltage settings. Um, I uh, bumped that up from three to 3.2. And then also the minimum voltage needs to be set to three. Um, also, um, I wish they really would have had higher rated ESCs on this. I think five amp is, uh, ESCs are too low, um, especially with this heavier whoop. I think eight to 10 amps would have been a better choice. The back on here, I had, didn't have any problems with it, but uh, I have heard that the five volt one amp back uh, might be a little bit uh, uh, too low of a rating for the run cam. Um, as it pulls more current than a typical nano camera. And then lastly, uh, there are two cons uh, that are related to the SD card. Um, getting the SD card in and out is pretty fiddly. Um, it's pretty hard to uh, just slide it in. The ducts are kind of slightly in the way, so you have to almost kind of bend down the duct a little bit to get it in um, horizontally there. Um, then also, because it doesn't have a retaining clip, um, just be aware, you know, in a crash, you can e eject these things. I know some people use a little bit of tape, but uh, uh, just keep that in mind. So what's the verdict on the Mobula 6 HD? I would say if you are a new pilot and are looking for a whoop to get into FPV, this probably isn't the product for you. Um, I think a better uh, product would be either the Mobula 6 19,000 K standard edition. Um, it comes in at a better price point. You can bash it around. It's lighter, a little more responsive. So, um, or the newbie drone um, Hummingbird brushless. Um, that's also very competitive in price uh, to the Mobula 6 standard. 
So those are the two drones I would, uh, or whoops, that I would rec recommend if you're a new pilot. But if you're somebody that uh, wants to have another addition to your, your whoop collection and you wanna take some 1080p HD type video with something that uh, is a form factor that nobody's gonna be afraid of, you can buzz around people's heads and they're not gonna get too frightened of it, then yeah, I think uh, it would be a good purchase. So uh, with that, thanks for watching my channel.